can you get a good featured privacy respecting pan and tilt IP security camera for 15 bucks? Stay tuned and find out. Hey guys, it's Josh with the WL Tech Blog, and today I have a redemption story for you. What I have here is the Senato D1 pan tilt zoom camera. None of these actually do zoom. That actually excited me quite a bit when it first came out earlier this year and this was going to be the first video I was going to do on installing the Thingino open source IP camera firmware however right as I was starting to film footage for this someone bought one and it had a different processor inside that's one of the common issues that you might find with using these cheap kind of no-name brands that you'll find on Amazon is sometimes they're just going to swap the internals. But now I think we are in a good position with support for both the old and the new processor. And so today's the day. Let's get started. Now I'm pretty sure this one is the original. This one has the T31 processor in it. I liked it so much. I bought another. I don't know if this is it. But I also bought another when the new T23 processor started to get used in these. And I'm going to show you real quickly how to determine which one you have and how to get and install the proper firmware for these cameras. So this is going to be another no tools install. However, you are going to need to use your hands. So that's going to be a little bit different than what we've been doing, but no big deal. You're going to take care of it. No problem. So first, let me go ahead and unbox these other two, and I'm going to show you just how these are exactly the same outside. I don't know which one of these is which, to be honest. Well, I put a piece of tape on this one, which means something, but I don't know what. Maybe the green tape means it's the good one. Maybe green tape means it's the bad one. This one's still in the bag. No green tape. absolutely no differences between these cameras the model number is the same the uh, sticker on the bottom with a QR code those are different on each particular device so that's always going to be different but there is no way to tell by looking at these which camera you've got so I'm going to show you real quickly how to take it apart and this is a no tools install as I mentioned but you're going to need to use your hands so right here there is a seam. It's kind of hard to see if you're not looking for it, but quite simply, you just grab the camera like this with one hand. You get a finger right here on the upper end. You give a little pull. Come over here, do exactly the same thing, and the head pops off. Now, here's what you're going to have inside. You're probably not going to see it too well in here, but the chip itself on this one i can fully see it i'm gonna i don't think this will work so i'm gonna add a photo right here now the chip is either going to say t31 or it's going to say t23 this one in my hand says t23 now this one here that's completely identical we're gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna grab it give a little tug and off it comes now this one has a little piece of foam. I don't know if I put it there or if it was there from the factory. But I'm just going to pull it off with my finger. And this one says T31. And I'll send, I'll go ahead and put a picture of that right here too. Put the foam back on. And we'll check camera number three here. Boom, boom, pops right off. T31. You probably can't see that. Alright, so those are the two models that you might find. There's T23, T31. The rest of the internals are identical. So we're going to go ahead and pop the lids back on. And all you do for that is you just put it in place and push it down. It snaps right together. Like brand new. 
Now this chip was a brand new model that they had just released at T23, and so it took us a little while to get support added into Thingino for it to be compatible, but that's been done here in the last couple of weeks, and these are now good to go. The only real difference I think that you're gonna find is the T31 supports H.264 and H.265 for video. The T23 only supports H.264, does not have that H.265. For some people that might be a killer feature, what I'm gonna say is these cameras are about 15 bucks. If you wanna get the H.265, you spend another five and get the Wook, which I've got a video of right here. Now, before we get started with flashing them, let's go ahead and just give these a quick comparison between the Sonato here and the Whoop camera. This one's brand new. I haven't even flashed it yet. I will say that Sonato, I bought a couple of these because of the price point, and I think that's really the compelling aspect of them is you can get these for about 15 bucks, and it's kind of a no-brainer. You want to get started, you don't know if you're really into it or not, like, is this really going to do what you want? Spend $15 instead of any higher number than that sounds like a win but the Wook you get a higher end processor it's got more memory on it so it handles more things at the same time it's got a better camera sensor on it it's all in all it's just a better device and it's only about five bucks more but I definitely don't blame anybody who wants to get these Sonatos because these are going to do most of the same job basically as well. The Wook, of course, is one of the only devices that I own more than one of, and that's because I like it, not because it's necessarily cheap, although it is fairly cheap. This one and the Wansview W7, which I also did a video of right here, those are cameras that I own multiples of because I like them. I've got a stack of cameras that I only have one of because I wanted to get support for it in Thingino, and that's as far as it went. All right, so back to the Sonato. And this is probably a brand name you've never heard of. This is actually an offshoot brand of the same company that owns Wansview, and they have two or three other brands as well. So a lot of these internals are going to be the same or very similar to products made by those other brands. I actually have one of the Wansview. I actually have the Wansview version of this, but I managed to kill it. So I don't have a video on that one yet. And that one costs more than this, so there's absolutely no reason I would tell you to get that WANS view over getting the Sonato. But an important thing with these, being based on the same firmware that you get with the WANS view, you can flash them in the same way. These have a SD card slot. When it's rotated like this, you can't see it, but you just tilt it back, and there's your SD card slot. So these cameras will look for a particular file name when it's in the bootloader, it's v4 underscore all dot bin for a full firmware flash file. It should only take a minute or so to get this fully flashed and boot it up on Thingino. So let's go ahead and prepare an SD card. All right, now I'm gonna use this 128 meg Thingino branded SD card that one of our members made up and this will be plenty big for what we need. I have personally done this process with SD cards as large as 32 gigs. However, it only needs to be like 32 megabytes to get the job done. So you don't need to go out and get a big SD card. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna format this thing to FAT32. Do not format it to XFAT because that won't work in the bootloader. Definitely make sure when you're formatting, you've got FAT32. All right, so I put a fresh file system on this SD card and I've downloaded the T23 version of the Sonato D1 firmware and I've renamed it to v4 underscore all dot bin. And this camera is brand new out of the box. It is my first T23 model. So I'm doing this for the first time on a completely fresh camera. So we're just gonna spin it up. We're gonna put the SD card in and we're gonna use one of the included USB cables that they give you. It's a nice, flexible, fairly long with a USB-C connector. And unfortunately, these cables do not carry data. So these are good for powering your camera, but you're not gonna be able to use them if, for example, you want to turn on the USB serial gadget to have a USB terminal into your device after flashing. So 
plug that into power. Go ahead and plug this dude in. Make sure I've got the right camera. T23. All right, and here we go. Plug it in. Got a red light. It's going to take a few seconds to boot. This one only has an 8 megabyte flash, so it takes half the time to do the flash process as some of the other devices. While that's going, I'll go ahead and get my phone out so we'll be able to do the Wi-Fi configuration once that part's done. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the camera. Pop out our SD card. Plug her back in. This first boot actually takes a little bit longer than subsequent boots because it's got a little bit of initial device setup that it has to do since it's a brand new unconfigured device. But once it's ready, it'll start moving. You will hear a couple clicks along the way while it's getting initialized. There we've got the motor reset, and now we've got our Thingino network. Go ahead and connect to that. Once it's connected, this will take you to the provisioning screen. You put in your Wi-Fi SSID, you put in your Wi-Fi password, and put in your desired root password, save credentials, It'll display what you've put in, give you the opportunity to go back if you got it wrong. So we'll hit looks good, proceed with reboot. Then you just wait a moment while the camera does its thing. All right, and it just did its motor reset. So we'll go ahead and find it on our network. Just have a look at my router and the host name will be reflective of the device. It'll have Sonato in it. So now I've got the IP address. You can also use that host name if you wish. All right. Then you're brought up to the login page and this is going to use root and the password that you put in during the config step. And here we go. We've got our live preview, and you can start configuring your camera for use. All right, now this will be a little interesting because I'm recording video from the Sonato camera and audio on my microphone. Deal with it. Just to give you an idea of the image quality of the device it's pretty good and you do have your pan and tilt they work quite well move around and you also have your night mode which isn't going to be too impressive since it is daytime and quite bright however the infrared is going to light me up quite brightly so as you can see, it is a good quality, fully featured camera at this point that doesn't send any of your data to any other country. So that's going to be it for the Sonato D1. As you can see, this is a very easy install and the camera really works great once you've got it done. Uh, we are a fully open source project. If you are interested in checking us out or contributing, you are always welcome over at our Discord server. The link is going to be down in the description, as well as the link to pick these guys up for about 15 bucks over on Amazon. Now, if you did want to get a higher end camera, I'll also include a link to the Wook. And of course, I did mention that video up there that'll show you how to do the install on that. It's a few more steps, but it is just as easy. It's another one that you don't require any tools to do. And that one, you don't even need to do the disassembly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, definitely give me a subscribe and give me a thumbs up would be appreciated. 
If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. If you do need help or support, definitely check us out over on the Discord. That is going to be your best bet. I do try and answer any questions we get in the comments. However, YouTube only gives me notification about the first comment in a thread, so it's very possible I might miss it or it'll be delayed. The developers of Thingino are all on the Discord channel and are going to be happy to give you a hand. All right, well, that wraps it up. Till the next video, stay fresh, cheese bags.